Well, it's that time of night again. We'll uh, do a little work on the Magnum. Now, I have to get a hole to match this. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to make a template of because this fits perfect. This is a perfect positive of this. So we need a, a negative of this. Well, we got two lights and only one watcher. Okay. So I need to make a template of this to transfer to this and get this cut in. And then we'll tack glue this on and shape it. Then we'll cut it apart and hollow it out. And Mike, these sides are eighth inch, but it's very good eighth inch stock. Really good eighth inch stock. So, what do we need to do? We need a piece of paper or something. Let's see. Uh, I guess we could use this. Yeah, I got some pretty weird ways of doing stuff, but gets the job done. Let me move some of this crap off here so we got a little room. My favorite tool. I love this saw. We'll use that scalpel. Someday I'll get around to cleaning this place up. Probably when I get back. Dookie, let's cut this up. And when you're doing these kind of things, you want to leave the line on when you draw it out because we got plenty of tools to remove wood, but I won't have a whole lot of tools to add. I mean, I'd have to cut a piece in. I just eyeballed it. I drew a line up on the uh, turtleneck, and we'll see how close my eye was to this pattern. Probably close enough to do the job, but I, I really like perfect, you know. So.
perfect is good. I can see it's not. My drawing is not perfect, but it'll be perfect. Hey, it's going great. Thanks for asking. We're only, uh, let's see, 18. We're only about 12 days into this build. As you can tell, my hands are black. I've been painting truck buddies all day. And that black uh, urethane, sure. pretty good stuff. Okay, I'm going to take the scalpel and leave the line on because, like I say, we got plenty of tools to sand. With the uh, steadiness of a surgeon. Alan, good evening. I guess we're going flying tomorrow. I will drive to St. Louis on Sunday. Because we don't have a whole lot of time. We gotta get some flights in. This is not good. This is two cores of teeth. Let's see what what's happening here. Why didn't it release? Must not have got it cut all the way through. It's cut through now, though. Oh, I see. Okay, if we did it right, it should be a tight fit. Hopefully, it's a tight fit. Or a reasonable fit, anyway. Damn. Man, just like I know what I was doing. That's a good fit. Okay. Now, oh, got a little bit there. Oh well, it'll be fine. Pretty close.
all get super filled anyway, so. You know what I might do? Is I might go ahead and slot these hinges for my hinges. Redo the leading edge of those elevators and put my hinges in it. My hinges are so superior to them other things. Okay, we want to tack this on here. Just tack it. We don't want to don't want to glue it all the way, so I better cut that off because it's going to aggravate me. You know what? Let's get another one to put less glue on. We'll get another snorkel. As you cut these Teflon tubes down, they get bigger and bigger and bigger, dispensing more glue. And we don't like lots of glue, we just like enough glue. But well, this series has been uh, has been well received. I mean, I get a lot of views on this thing. I think I had 695 in the first week of the first video. And of course, the playlist. These all these uh, Magnum videos are going to be in the playlist. So, if you want to know how to build a Magnum or how I build a Magnum, you'll be able to see by watching the playlist. I think I'm going to change up the rudder. I'll either sand this one down to half the thickness. I might do that so that it fits this turtle deck better. Mike Pratt wrote me a little note saying about gluing a piece of trailing edge behind the canopy here. I'm, it won't matter because I'm going to paint the canopy anyway, so thanks for the suggestion, Mike, but we're not going to have a pilot in this, so... Craig Biswick says... Yeah, probably so. I mean, it's, uh, it, you know, everybody knows that airplane. Let's see, I got an old pillow over here. Yeah, no, better not. I guess I'll just do it in my hand. And I got that. Let's see here. We don't want to take all night. We'll sand. 
with 80. Well, that was painless. That took it right down. That yeah, was painless. Yep, I'm going to make that an eighth inch. I'll have an eighth inch rudder instead of a three sixteenths rudder. It'll be lighter and it'll sand in better. Okay, that's one side roughed in. Let's see, I was sanding this way. I need to sand this way. dollar super chat last night so probably gonna go ahead and load up the uh, the modem again the hot spot so we can shoot at the field of course I mean, I'm gonna cover the gnats regardless hopefully Danny shows up and gives me a hand Buzzing back and forth there. Okay. 
Now, you probably can't see me do it. Let me look here. Yeah, see what I'm doing there is uh, I'm looking down, sighting down the fuselage of the turtle deck to, to make it symmetrical. I have a little bit of extra material here, so we're gonna sand it right here. Is that important for the flight characteristics? Probably not, but it sure is important for the looks characteristics. Symmetrical is good. Let's see what we got for weight. That's the important part. Nothing's been hollowed yet, so we're going to lose some weight there. Come on. Two hundred and twelve grams. Let's go mode. Seven fifty. So we're going to be in the six ounce range for few slugs. That's pretty damn good. Seven forty five now. Oh, knocking it loose there. Is this necessary to do here? No, but it sure makes it easier doing it in your hand than trying to do it when the airplane's all together with a wing in it. that much. We sand it through. We might have to do that much. So how do I want to do this? <coughs> stick don't buy the cheap Chinese tape I you know we tried it but it leaves glue so
They asked me at work is how, do, how would I feel about becoming the permanent painter? I said, no problem. More money. To Jerry, when he was alive, he knew I was a painter because he was on the forum. I told him I'd do it for my pay plus a $75 spiff for each truck body that I paint. So that'd be worth doing. You do uh, four trucks a week, that's 300 bucks extra a week. We can do that. And I won't complain. Our painter's on vacation, that's why I ended up having to paint. So, I'm a welder, fabricator, and a painter there. <laughs> and the wire man, I do all the wiring. That little tape trick is pretty important. You wouldn't think so. You know, your eyes are pretty good, but you want to keep a line straight down the way. Just to at least get it started, just put a piece of tape on it. That'll help you make it symmetrical. I need to get the canopy and get it cut in to see where it's going to go to. Yep, we got some uh, chatters here. Let's see what they say. Painting is easier than I normally do. Uh, no. Painting a truck body is like pouring a concrete slab. Once you get started, you can't, there's no brakes. So I, I will uh, start it and finish it in one setting. Otherwise, you got overspray. These trucks are 40 foot long. Pretty good, pretty bueno. Got a spot right here. I was thinking, how how long can I do this? Can I do this another six years? I'm the oldest one in the shop. The youngest guy in the shop is 57. The geriatric ward, he's, he's got problems. He's got all kinds of health stuff going on. I'm still in good shape for an old man. I think it's because I do model airplanes.
I don't know. Getting up and down off the ground is pretty tough. Okay, we get a drink of water here. Now it's not finished off, but we're pretty close on symmetry. If you look here, pretty close. I'll have to open hand sand it with some 180. And this right here, let me see, maybe I'll tack the rudder on and we'll go from there. See what happens. See what happens. Yeah, it's see, that's too thick. I need to sand the inside of this rudder flat. I need to take about 50% off. Fifty percent. We can do that. It's already made, so... Uh, flatbeds. We build flatbeds. Diesel flatbeds. I was in the in the wheelchair division, but there's not enough of that work to keep us going. So I'm in the fab department now and build these truck bodies, service bodies as well. We do, I do them too. Which is like you see on the back of a plumbing truck, you know, a big box. It has all the doors and crap in it. I think we're going to get this down to half its weight. Take it off with the turtle deck. Now I'm I'm sanding cross grain, and I'm noticing some deep scratches right here from rocks being picked up. So you got to kind of watch where to stop because we're going to have to sand that out with 180 down to 320. So don't go too far. Also need to cut right here and add a piece. So 
I'll do that too tonight. Might as well do that now. I added that uh, 3 8 bottom on there when it called for a quarter, so... What are the sandpaper grits you use and what for? I use 36 and 80 for rough shaping. 180 when we get close, 320 to finish. And to be honest with you, there's not much need to go any lower than 320 until you get paint on it, you know. If you're sanding something with 80 or, you know, some lightweight sandpaper, you're wasting your time. So I've sanded that quarter down to just a little bit over an eighth. And we'll finish it, we'll start cleaning it up with 180 here. Gotta watch this thing, it's digging a hole. Need to get my soft lock, I guess. Better get the soft block. Here we go. Sanding is an art. You gotta listen, watch, feel. Do we get that glued on to finish it up? Now I'm sanding with the grain with 180 to, to eliminate those scratches that I put in with the 80 grit. You won't get them all out, but you'll get most of them out. You get get down to uh, 320, and they'll co all come out. Okay, that's more better. Let's see what it weighs. I think it's in the seven gram range now. That's good. Come on. Six grams. Seven grams. I had it right the first time. Seven grams. One quarter ounce. That's about what it should weigh.
I've been building these airplanes so long I can tell you what shit weighs or what it should weigh just by the part. This side's flat. Why isn't this thing going around? Huh. Auto directors on, on, on. Back. Auto director. Camera. This side is flat. This side is airfoil. That's all the rudder offset you need. You don't need big rudder offset because you got three degrees of motor offset. When I was flying a, I don't know, I think it was five, six lap. I, I don't usually fly that slow. John said, what well, stays out there real, real well? Well, I can do, I can do the maneuvers upwind with motor offset. Got to be careful with that dust. Vacuum it up. Some guys, you know, Brett Buck and those guys, are, motor upset. No, we got to run it at zero. You know, I build these airplanes for me and to have fun, and I like line tension. That's much better. Okay, let's tack it on there. Phil. Oh, that's you again. You again. So, before I do this, I need to make another piece before I glue it completely on. Here's the reason I had to cut that off. You see, I added that extra, and there's three-eighths of an inch at the bottom. So I need to make a piece like this, three-eighths of an inch taller, and glue that on and sand it in. It's only wood. What do we want to use? I guess we'll use this quarter. <laughs> we'll start out with the same. Keep it. This was good, good wood. Now, here's another thing I'm going to do. The grain runs up and down. We're going to run it vertically. That'll stiffen that rudder up. I'll leave it large so I can sand it round. Yep, that'll be fine. 
It'll be fine. Cut it long so I can sand it in. Remember guys, tonight's Charles night. If you want to see the guys chatting about whatever, he comes on in about an hour. So bueno. I think we'll put it on the flat so I only have to sand one side of it. Cold is tearing me up. Been blowing my nose, and what comes out looks like white glue. Must be monkeypox I got. Tell you what got me, Brodax. Sleeping outside in the rain. I'm too old for that. I don't know what I'm thinking. You know, when I was riding motorcycles, my idea of camping was a motel with a swimming pool. Here I and I was younger then. Oh well. Had more money then, though, too. I made good money as a motorcycle mechanic. I should go back to it. Except they're too damn dangerous. Okay. We added our uh, piece on there. Now we can... Glue this rudder on and sand it. Well, I don't even have to glue it on. I can just plane it in, I guess. Oops. Go 
don't get excited. Get excited there, Spark. Be a new airplane with a new engine and new I'm gonna make a fiberglass tank for it this will be all new stuff on this airplane of course new engine that's 50 years old I'm gonna be redone Pretty wild, 50 year old engine. But that's what I like. I think we're gonna have to sand that with my fingers. Get it up close. coming a ways off though I think I'm gonna go ahead and glue that on all the way It's going to be a rock. Damn. Greg Biswick. No, we're not going to use West Systems. We've got another kind of resin we'll use. Same resin we used to make the props, and it wasn't West System. But yeah, we'll show the uh, making of the tanks. I got Wendy's tank molds now. Thanks to Lend. Thank you, Wendy, if you ever watch my channel. I don't think he's interested in airplanes anymore. Guys, a hell of a craftsman. Too much paint, but a hell of a craftsman. Can't put all that silver on it and expect it to be light. Well, it's only a six ounce finish a <laughs> year, but.
I can hardly wait till I hollow these blocks to see what this fuselage is actually going to weigh. Because I can see we're at seven and a half ounces. I bet we're going to be we're going to lose an ounce. We got 23 viewers and the average duration is 15 minutes. So I could say this Sig Magnum build is a popular, popular build. some more. Gotta go some more. Having these sides eighth inch really helped out for the shape. Of course the longerons didn't hurt either because we can sand into those. I haven't hit them yet but Nonetheless, we can do that if we need to. Pretty damn close. I need to take some more up here. Is it moving? No. Encoder is sending fat data faster than real time again. We'll just have to get over it. Okie dokie, let's sand with this. Put quite the groove in that. Fortunately, it gets super filled there. close pretty close
I don't need to get this perfect because it's got to come apart and be glued back on again. But I'd like to get it close. Just so I can see what it's going to weigh. close really Is this thing even on yeah, it's on okay Wrong one. This one. Now, what do you think? Is that a good way to do things? Mike seems to think I have a prop extension on this. Mike, I don't. Still need to figure out what I'm going to do with this cow mounting situation because the landing gear is kind of in the way. Tack it on and shape it. Now we got an hour in already. I don't want to bore you guys uh, too much. We got 75 views, 25 watchers now. Hopefully, you learned something about how I do my thought process tonight. Pretty simple stuff. Tack it on and sand it to shape. You guys want to see Saturday at the field? Let me know now so I can reload my hotspot. I'll wait a minute until the screen changes. That way I know you guys heard it. A 
Okay, we got 16 likes and 26 viewers. 10 of you guys are falling down on the job, so hit the thumbs up button. More importantly for engagement on this is leave a comment after the video is over. That boosts the metrics and the meaning means that it will be suggested to other people. Maybe that they fly RC or whatever because a lot of this stuff can be converted over to RC. So like, subscribe, share the video, and I will see you tomorrow. Nobody wants to see you at the field, so I guess we ain't going to reload it. <coughs> we'll save it for the Nats, I guess. Yeah, I got a mess to clean up tonight. All right, thanks for watching. Fair winds, tight lines, and we'll see you later.